This is going to be a 0.2 layer height instead of 0.1. I'm using the same print settings, acceleration set to 8000. And then I'm going to use the same script, which is just a real simple set speed modifier based off your layer. So it's going to be based off the layer height times 10. So at 10 millimeters, it's going to be adding 100 to be 100. And then 20, 30, and 40. We'll end up at, at 30 millimeters, we'll end up at 400 millimeters a second basically. So it's going to be a 200 to 10, it's starting at 100. Um, I'm not going to mess with the temperature at all. I've just been leaving it at a straight 240. I know it probably could have ended up going higher. Maybe if it starts failing, I'll raise the temperature just to see how much I can push it. But I, the idea is I want to see the limit without playing with the temperature too much. So the point one one I didn't actually record me sending it to the slicer. This time I am. This way it's uh everything was all there in one uniform video, so there's no question to what the settings were. And I could even probably that shows that it was uploaded right when I clicked the button, and that's the file that's printing. And I did it from a cold start. This way, uh, once again, everything is just uh, continuous. So I'm going to speed everything up right now. And just let it go through. Okay, right around here is where it started. Uh, this is where the, the quality started going down, probably right, right close to, a little bit closer to 200. So I ended up having to start raising the uh, temperature a little bit. And then at around 240, I raised it again. And then uh, everything started getting better for a while. So I'll speed it back up again. Okay, right here is where I end up hitting 270, and then I think the highest I go is 280, and I'm going to bring it up to the end now.
Okay, so right here is my 390. This is where it starts getting messed up again. Um, I mean, not horrible, but a little bit. I didn't bother pushing the temperature anymore because I just didn't see a need to. And, uh, I mean, I was honestly just amazed with the fact that this was all with the Dragon High Flow. I mean, a Dragon Standard Flow, not even a High Flow, on a .4 nozzle. Um, yesterday, when I did the .1, up to 400 millimeters a second, it's on a, it's on the Facebook uh, page for the Trudon Quartz Y Advanced users. But I might, uh, maybe I'll, I'll make that one a video of that, too, because I used my, uh, my DSLR for that one, so it's a much better quality video. This one, I honestly just kind of, I didn't really expect it to, I really didn't expect to get over 300 millimeters a second, so I was just using, I didn't only have the video from the little camera, but it ended up turning out a lot better than I thought, and it kind of just proves that it's really all up to the extruder. All this is, besides a stock Dragon, is a tungsten carbide nozzle, and it's a custom version of the orbiter extruder that I made where I dropped the tolerances down to 0.25 millimeters from one millimeter on the filament path and then I think instead of being like 6.3 or 6.8 as the distance from the top to the bottom filament guide mine is like 3.24 so I mean it definitely usually with my regular orbiters even per ones that I purchased that are injection molded or nylon SLS printed I have three of them they all, I never made it past 100 millimeters a second. I used to have to stick to around 70 to reliably print TPU. Otherwise, we just wrap around the gear. Anyway, hope you guys like it. If you guys are interested in getting the Orbiter Extruder, uh, the download's available on my website. Uh, the link's on the bottom.